Hi, I'm Lily Bertness, and we're living in Westfield, New Jersey right now, and I'm going into 11th grade. I'm going to be running track, and I've been doing that since freshman year. And this summer we're up at the cabin with Grandma, and we're just asking about her life, asking her questions, and she's going to tell us about things that happened. So. Yeah, thank you. This is, this is great, great. Well, the last time uh, I was talking, I was left off just as I was leaving for St. Olaf. So I was just 17 years old, going to St. Olaf. I didn't know one person there. Uh, not one person. I didn't know anything about St. Olaf. I lived in the freshman dorm with two roommates, and almost immediately I got to be very good friends with uh, Beverly Dibvig, who still is one of my very closest friends. So I had a few dates in the fall, September, October, uh, but nothing very special at all. I turned 18 years old on November 25th, and then it was Thanksgiving vacation. I came back from Thanksgiving vacation, and I lived in this dorm where every Wednesday night, everybody had to get together with a junior counselor at 10 o'clock on Wednesday night, and all of, the, all of the telephones were turned off. You couldn't get a phone call in at all for a half an hour. And uh, there was just one telephone on every floor, and uh, somebody, whoever was going by, would answer the telephone, and then they'd say, telephone for Susie Smith. Oh, t telephone for Julie Johnson, and so you always knew who was being called to get dates, <laughs> whoever was calling that person. So we all knew who was, who was going out somehow or another. So this one night was 10.30, and the uh, telephones were turned back on, and then telephone for Dolores Lyseth, so I went to answer the telephone, and there was this person on the phone and said, uh, this is Jim Burtness. I wonder if you'd like to go to the movie on Friday night. This was Wednesday night. And I said, yeah, I'd, I'd like to go. And then he said, uh, do you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> and he wasn't saying, oh, do you know who I am? You know, but he was kind of saying, you know, would you go out with anybody, any stranger at all? Because I'd never talked to him. Mm -hmm. I'd never even said hi to him. I didn't know anything about him. Well. I did know everything about him, but uh, he, uh, so I said, yeah, yes, I, I, I do know who you are. I didn't tell him right then that, uh, that I thought he was the most gorgeous man or boy <laughs> that I'd ever seen in my life. <laughs> so we went to the movies Friday night. <clears throat> you walk downtown Northfield about two miles or something down to the movie mm -hmm. theater, and then you go out and have a Coke or something afterwards. And so then we walked back to the dorm, and he said, do you want to go out to, tomorrow night, Saturday night? And I said, no, actually, I'm, I'm busy. <laughs> I happened to have a date that night with Jack Armstrong, and we were going to the other movie in town. <laughs> there were two movies in town. And so uh, he said, well, what about Sunday night? We could go to the Christmas concert. And I said, yes, that would be, that would be marvelous. I'd like to go to the Christmas concert. Actually, uh, when I went to the movie Saturday Night with Jack Armstrong, Jim and a friend of his came and sat a couple of rows behind us in the theater and threw popcorn at my head all night long. But I just kind of went like this because I didn't, I thought, what's going on, you know? But uh, I found out later that he and Rookie Schrader were sitting a couple of rows behind. <laughs> So <clears throat> then um, Sunday night we went to the Christmas concert, which was, you know, really, really beautiful, the St. Old Christmas concert. And afterwards we uh, walked downtown Northfield for a cup of hot chocolate or something. And then Jim said, uh, the river is frozen. Should we just walk down to the river? It, the river runs right through Northfield. And okay. so we walked down there and walked under the bridge, and then he kissed me. <laughs> <laughs> on our second date. I mean, that was really something, but it was, the, the river was frozen, and so everything was... So anyway, we went together for then for the next four and a half years, and then we got married. So it, it worked out, you know, yeah. <laughs> just fine. He was just a marvelous, marvelous man, the love of my life. I'll maybe have more to say about him later on, but 
needless to stay, say, I didn't stay just the one year at St. Olaf. I kept going back to St. Olaf every, every year <laughs> until I graduated. And that was just really just because of Jim. Well, <clears throat> after I graduated from St. Olaf, I, I taught uh, high school Latin in Portland for a year, first and second year Latin. And then we got married in 1951, a year, year after I graduated from St. Olaf. Got married at Central Lutheran Church at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on a Sunday. And then there was a reception afterwards in the church uh, parlors there. And I borrowed my cousin's wedding dress. It's the <laughs> same one that Deborah wore for her wedding. Oh. It was just an absolutely beautiful dress, but I borrowed her dress. My three sisters were the bridesmaids, and they wore the dresses uh, that we had all sewed the year before for my sister's <laughs> wedding. So, And then they carried red roses, and we had beautiful flowers and everything. And Jim's... Uh, a real good friend was the best man, and then our brother-in-law and another friend were there. <clears throat> and they wore navy blue suits, just suits that they, they, they had. Uh, no, no tuxes or anything like that. And then the reception afterwards was cake and mints with coffee and tea and, <laughs> and punch. <laughs> and that's kind of the way everybody got married in those days. It was, they, it was not the big, big deal that it is today. Yeah. And uh, it was just a marvelous wedding, just really, really nice. And uh, probably cost a couple hundred dollars, you know, just, just absolutely bare, bare bones necessity <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> no big reception. You didn't have to, you know, get a hall or any, anything like that. Then the next day, we packed up all of our gifts in the car, and we drove, and we drove back to St. Paul. <clears throat> and Jim interned in a church there, and I was a grade school librarian in Edina, which was a suburb of Minneapolis. And that, that was really a, really a good job, too. You, you know, the, I had one library the first year, and the second, that year, they opened up another library in another school, and then... The next year, then they opened up a library in a brand new school, so I set up two brand, you know, li libraries yeah. just absolutely from scratch. And at that time, I was the only full-time elementary school librarian in the state of Minnesota. Oh Every, everybody was a teacher and did it, you know, <laughs> kind of part-time. But then library science got to be a, a real, real big thing to go into, and it's a, it's a very, very interesting job. We lived in an apartment building with two other seminary couples, and uh, plus the owner, who was just, they were just really strange, strange people. She got the gift of speaking in tongues, and her husband got the gift of interpretation. <laughs> exactly at the same time. I mean, you, you do talk about weird anyway. <laughs> uh, Full of mice. It was. It was really a, really a. <laughs> anyway, we did live there one year, and the next year we moved, and we moved into another apartment. Jim was a senior at the seminary, <clears throat> and then he was the youth worker at the church and also the janitor. And I was still grade school librarian that year. Then Jim graduated from the seminary, and uh, we moved to Princeton, and we were two years out there. Princeton was just an absolutely marvelous, marvelous t time. Well, you, we yeah. were there with you, yeah, mm -hmm. and it's and beautiful. it was a marvelous yeah. weekend when we were there with the uh, the boating or what was going on there. Yeah, Some, there was a rowing competition. A rowing competition. Yeah. So it was all Harvard and Yale and Princeton and Columbia and all all of the big schools. Well, Al Albert I'm. Einstein lived a couple of blocks away, and we, we saw him padding down Mercer Avenue to the Institute for Advanced Study. He died at the end of the second year that we were there. Two children were born in Princeton, Steve in 1953 and Eric in 1955. It was really a fun, 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 fun time. Actually, I have much more to say probably about Princeton, but I think that maybe we can do that in the next conversation okay and maybe when we go, go off when i go out there again we'll go to princeton again and walk yeah, hopefully. we went to a nice little uh 
We went to a nice little restaurant. Just to, yeah, right. Yeah. Right off the main street, mm -hmm. and that that was really good. Yeah. And kind of the university was just right next to the downtown area. So yes, nice. It was it was really part of the part of the town. So maybe we'll go there. Yes, hopefully. And then we went to Washington Crossing, I think. Yeah. Well, Washington crossed the... Delaware. Delaware. Anyway, you're, you're, <laughs> work, you're living in a great place with, with history around every corner out there. Yeah, we've had a lot. Yeah. Learned. Well, good. Good to talk to you a little bit. Yeah, thank you for, thank you for telling us. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. Thanks so much. <laughs>